Hello everyone, welcome inside my studio. Okay, let's have some fun and let's see if we can put together a nice uh, bookshelf in our grid uh, one point perspective that we made the other day. So before we get started, I just want to point out a few things that you may want to have with you. If you don't have them, you could always substitute them for something else. I have my T-square. I also have a triangle, the 30, 60, 90 degree one. I have a ruler. And it happens to be 18 inches. I have an eraser. Any eraser will do. Um, you have a choice between using a mechanical pencil or a regular pencil. In this case, I'm just going to use a regular pencil. Now, as I pointed out, I'm going to be working on the grid that I hopefully had everyone to make, even in practice. And we're going to be making this bookshelf. And what I've done is I've put this bookshelf on tracing paper. Um, and now I'm going to show you the surface that I'm going to be working on. Let's move this to the side. Okay, let's flip this back for a second. Okay, this is the space in which we're working in. The one point kind of semi room, if you will. This was, this is where we're working at. You can draw directly on here if you like. I've chosen to uh, make trace and paper layers. So here's a trace and paper layer of my grid. So I can keep the area clean for something else and I can also keep my grid clean for something else and so I put another layer of tracing paper over the top so this way I can again make another bookshelf but not contaminate my grid or my clean room area I'm going to show you this this is just the basic measurements basic meaning you don't have to stick to them and you don't have to do all of the decorative stuff you can just put a, a basic bookshelf and that's fine my bookshelf is going to be four feet from the back of the wall i'm going to call this the back of the wall yes this is a wall but i'm going to call this the back of the wall so when i count my four feet i'm simply going to be counting use it right here four boxes which are indicated as feet for me in my matrix and then my bookshelf is actually five feet wide so again once I make my foot lines of where the bookshelf will be sitting, I'm going to then count five grids more for the width of the bookshelf. It's two feet deep. So that's this angle. So once again, I'll just be counting one, two grids over for the width. And again, the height is five and a half. Now, my five and a half feet tall is to here, not this decorative part. I may or may not include that in the end, but I just want you to be clear so that when I do go a little higher, no one says, oh, I thought it was five and a half. My bookshelf is five and a half feet from right here, this point to the corner bottom. And then I may or may not add the decorative part to the top. So let's get started. And while I'm working, I just wanted to explain that part. Only if I have to explain something, will I even say anything. So if I point I'm pointing to the vanishing line where I'll be placing the ruler. If I point again, it'll be just to simply indicate uh, where I'm going, but I'll try to minimize the words, okay? Okay, so let's get started. As I stated, Thank 
Okay, so there's the footprint, there's the base, and you just saw that did the angle came from the vanishing point from this line here to this line here, which is two feet deep, five feet across, counting the squares. There's my basic frame. Now to add some shelves. For these, you can be pretty random. You can put them anywhere you want to. I'm going to try and guesstimate.
Those little dots for me are approximately where I want my shelves. And I'm going to put a thickness to them. So there's that also. For the shelves, I'm going to go from the vanishing point straight across from this front line to those dots. Or better yet, right until it hits the wall. For the thickness, I'm just guesstimating. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to show you how to put furniture into a space. So as thick as they are, if some of them are thicker than others, doesn't really matter to me because the idea is really more of what I'm after in this particular video. Now, based on the angles, some of this will see the bottom, some will see the top, and others we won't see anything. And why I haven't done the bottom yet is I'm debating on whether or not I want to put some kind of a fancy trim along the base and fancy trim along the top. So as far as those two areas go, I'll save that for later. For now, I'm just again going to put in my shelves. For this one, I will probably see the bottom. So I'll go from the vanishing point. But yet, sorry about that. I'll just make a straight line. Now the straight line that I'm going to be making, I'm going to this corner portion right here. There. So that would be typically the bottom of, of the shelf that I see. This one, I probably won't see anything. This one, I would see more of the top. So I'm going to put my line across the top there. But again, I'm going to be going from the vanishing point. To here, let me just go a little bit lower, just a little bit lower. Maybe I won't see much here either. Is that, is that what I'm indicating? Maybe I'll see the bottom. Just trying to make sure. What would I see? Would I see the bottom? I don't think so. I think I would see more of the top if I saw anything. So let me just go here with this, not from the vanishing point, but just from the arrow straight. Yeah, that seems about right. I would see the top. And then this one, I would see the top. When I put the one at the bottom, I would see the top, but I'm going to come to that later. Okay. Now I'll go to the vanishing point and put in the back. Can be a little confusing, but it's okay. You work it out. That's what the whole idea is. You just take your time and just work it out. Okay, so I'm going to do a little erasing. And there are my shelves. So now I'm going to work on the bottom. I think I will add a trim. You don't have to do this part. This is pretty much a bookshelf. You can see it's in the dimensions. You can see that it's in perspectives. You can draw a thick line here and be done if you like, but I'm going to go for just a little bit of a 
a kind of a fancy look. Not nothing fantastic. Just going to trim it up a little bit. Give it a little bit of a base. That extends a little bit on both sides. So now that I have that, let me angle this off. And I'll determine where it ends. So I want it to come out a little bit in the front. Now I'm just I'm just playing right now, but basically I'm just drawing a, a trim, a little fancy decoration. If you were working from something real, you just look at yours and make the determination. It's going to go a little bit past the lines a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And so now that I have that, let me put in that, that finish top. This will definitely be up here. This is why I waited. So I wasn't sure where I was going to have my, my lines just yet. But now I know. There. Okay, so now let me get rid of this line here. And for this front part, I'm just going to make it curve a little bit. Like that. Curve a little bit. Like that. I'm going to connect it. This goes back in a little bit. This we're not going to worry about that one. This one, I think we could just erase it. There. Okay. Now for the top. For the top, I'm going to put a little crown at the top. That's going to be a little bit different. So what I'm going to do first is just make a little design. I'm going to make a little bit of a curl that comes out here. A little bit of a curl that comes out here. Now I'll join those lines, join this back, pull that up a little bit. And pretty much that'll be my bookshelf. She racing a line down there. We'll be finished in a few seconds. I'll get that line later. I'm going to keep you. We're almost done. Just going to join these two little spots right there. That's good. And then, of course, there'll be a little bit of height in the back, back here. So let me put that really quick. I'm just going to say it's going to come up maybe about like that. And then I'll draw a straight line. This. Sometimes you have to make little corrections, but it's it's fine. There. All right. So there's my bookshelf, and as you can see, it's functional. Now you can darken it. You can go back over the lines with a marker, with a pen. But the basic idea here was we made this bookshelf based on our floor grid, using the measurements of the floor. Counting one, two, three, four to make a line that would extend here, maybe two boxes because that's two feet. Two feet here because that would be one, two, three, four, five. So we would extend here. Then we just drew lines up, kind of boxed in our bookshelf and slowly designed it. So no matter what, this bookshelf is in perspective. And if you were going to put things on it, like books, you can do that. We're not going to get into that part in this particular video. This exercise was for you to be able to at least place a piece of furniture in a space that we had worked with, with a grid we had worked with, using the grid to help you in the measuring and placement so you can understand how this can be important. Because now if you wanted to put a couch, if the couch was 10 feet, 
and it was approximately starting here. You would just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you can make your up lines and start putting your couch in. Or it starts here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You put your up lines, you put your couch here, you put your picture here. You have something coming off of this wall, some kind of a desk or a table. You could just make the lines for that object go up on that keeping it in perspectives and you start to build a room that's why i wanted you to do this exercise and to do this grid and to basically understand that as always perspectives is just a tool it's no different than a pencil an eraser or a ruler this grid was just a tool to help us place this bookshelf and we use lines and angles to make sure we stayed in perspectives. And again, you can darken this up if you like, but as far as I'm concerned, this has been a pretty long video. I tried to keep true to my word with minimal words only to explain what I'm explaining now. And I'm gonna say until the next exercise or the next video or even our next class session, take care and bye-bye.